Hello, and thank you for joining this webinar by KnowledgePoint. I'm Thomas Carlson, and I'm going to take you through our brand new Manufacturing Industry Insight Report that we've decided to name Making in a Digital World Reengineering Skills. The focus of the report is on the manufacturing industry and the advancement in technology. Our emphasis is going to be on how that changes the demand and requirements for skills for those who are participating in the industry. We're looking at that from an international global level, but we're also drilling down into some interesting regions to see different opportunities and different challenges, depending on where you are in the world. One of the absolute key messages that we want to share with this report is that we see big opportunities, but we also see a requirement for the participants in the industry to work together with academia, with government, and with other peers in order to reap the full benefits. We've chosen to work with Olodas, which is one of the leaders in the manufacturing industry. And I'll come back later on to what that means. But let's first start by looking at some of the high level conclusions that we're reviewing in our report. And let's start by framing the challenge or setting the scene. And we can definitely conclude from the start that the manufacturing industry is strongly contributing to economic growth. It's also an industry that is very cutting edge, where new ways of working, new technology is being adopted at a really high pace. The fourth industrial revolution is probably not unfamiliar to those of you who are listening to this webinar. And we see how that drives a lot of financial value for the companies that adopt digital work processes. However, we also see that it places new demands on the type of skills that the participants in the industry need in order to reap those full benefits. Another area which is likely still high on a lot of agendas is the pandemic. We hope that we've passed through the worst phase, but we can also see that the pandemic brought with it a change way of doing business, of working remotely and collaborating with others. This can add value now that we pass through the worst phase. However, again, only if we have the right workforce with the right skills to take advantage of those new ways of working. And finally, while these are big global trends, we can also very clearly see in the report that there are differences between different regions different opportunities and different challenges. And we want to drill down on a few key regions to showcase some of those, both opportunities and potential challenges that we should work together to overcome. So let's start at the very highest level and look at industry 4.0, and particularly in terms of how working with digital tools, digital processes, interconnectivity, leveraging automation and machines, et cetera, all of those good things are really leading to significant increased value for those companies that are implementing those work processes and those workflows. You can see some of the stats from our report on this slide. But as I mentioned in the introduction, what we're really emphasizing is what this means for skills and for those of us who are in the industry today. And we can see that it also places new demands on people. It means that we have to know how to use the digital tools. We have to be able to think in interconnectivity workflows, being able to connect the dots and see how a machine can be part of a workflow that was previously maybe done by a human, how we can evaluate results, output, look at data and leverage that to draw conclusions in order to work more efficiently. Simply put, a new skills landscape that's been brought about the massive and rapid development in the technology. This presents opportunity, but it actually also presents a bit of a challenge or a risk. And I think one of the things that often appear, especially in public debate, is the risk of having your job replaced by a machine, if we put it bluntly. And our report sees in the data and also by speaking to some industry leaders, that this is a tangible risk for certain areas, certain jobs, certain processes will undoubtedly be replaced by automation and the new ways of working. However, what we're also seeing is that this is not a zero sum game. So for every 
process or task or even job role that's disappearing, there are new processes, new tasks, and new jobs that are being added. So this is actually something that can be very um, positive for the participants in the industry, provided that they have the skills required for these new jobs. So what are those new jobs or skills that will be asked for both today and in the future job market? Well, on this slide, you see a few. Uh, there's more in the actual report that drills down even further. Um, we've chosen to talk about job roles, but this could be equally could be you know, skill sets that are part of other type of jobs, for example, being an engineer. And what we see is that it's a lot of this is around being able to work with and understand data, understanding more complex processes, working with business development, see working with others, being able to apply, um, you know, machine learning, again, data in workflows in order to work more efficiently. Where is the type of jobs and skills that will be less demanded in the future are more you know, jobs that are more about data entry, doing repeatable processes or tasks that can be more easily replaced by machines. Our message is one of opportunity and, and that this opens the door both for career development for individuals, but actually also for economic growth for both companies and countries. But the key is in making sure that the workforce has those skills that industry needs moving forward. Another key area that is impacting both the world here and now, but actually also when we look forward is the pandemic and maybe not the pandemic itself anymore, but rather the side effects of some of the change ways of working and change processes, et cetera. And one of the key things that happened during the pandemic was of course that people were forced to work remotely because we couldn't get into the offices anymore. Now what the data suggests and also different surveys around the world is that this is a way of working that will remain in place also now that we've passed through the worst phase of the pandemic. We can see in our report that almost half of the employees are expecting to work remotely, maybe not 100% of the time, but certainly for a part of their time as we move forward. This places new demands on employers to provide the framework, the tools and the processes in order to facilitate this. But it actually also places new requirements back on the employees because they need to have the right skills when it comes to working in digital tools um, having the work processes in place to manage their time and still deliver high value output as part of this. So we can definitely see that this is also part of uh, the future work and connected to how technology is moving forward. So the numbers we've looked at so far are global in their nature. So they're big trends that impact the whole world. However, we do also know that there are regional differences and different regions around the world are known for and, and stronger in certain areas. One of the advantages and one of the opportunities with the quick changes in technology and also the change mindset, if you like, that the pandemic brought with it is that regions that would traditionally maybe not be seen as manufacturing powerhouses now have an opportunity, a real opportunity to leapfrog and get not only catch up, but actually get ahead of some of the more established markets. One such market, which our company works quite a lot with is the Middle East, Northern Africa region. This is a region that is mostly known for its natural resources, but maybe not so much for its manufacturing output. But this is also an, uh, an interesting uh, case study where we can see that maybe that's not a completely accurate view if we look ahead a few years and look at the potential, especially when taking it into account that we will have new tools, new ways of working, and that we are more prone to work internationally and remotely. The MENA region has a huge young population that's about to enter the workforce. 127 million, according to estimates uh, from the I ILO, for example. 
that presents an opportunity that a lot of other parts in the world who are more recognized today for their manufacturing excellence uh, doesn't have. Um, however, there are also some clear obstacles in, in this particular region. Almost half of Africa's youth perceive that their current skills are misaligned with their current job, for example. So there's a lot to be done in terms of reskilling, upskilling, and training in general. And manufacturing is still you know, the smaller component of the economy in some of these markets, 12% as an average across the different countries. In our report, we drill down on what the key opportunities look like and how some governments are really investing in this. The key message for this webinar is really to say there is a different implementation pace in different parts of the world. But just because a region is strong today doesn't necessarily mean that they have the biggest potential for growth tomorrow. And um, this part, the Middle East, Northern Africa, definitely has a lot of potential. But it will require working together and focusing on education and training in order to make sure that the right skills are in place to reap those benefits. And speaking about that, since our report is about skills and skills development, we think there are three areas that really need to be front and center for the manufacturing industry, no matter where in the world. First and foremost, we need to make sure that talent and developing our existing employees and our future workforce goes hand in hand with implementing new technology and new workflows. It's really important to think training, education, alongside of an implementation schedule for 3D printing or a new way of producing things. Because if we don't have people in place who can manage the new processes, how are we ever going to be fully reaping the benefits that those new the process is spring. We also think that for on a more um, holistic level that education and training need to be a central piece when government and academia look at how do we prepare our population, our future workforce for the demands and requirements that our industry has on them. A lot of this is centered around reskilling, upskilling and making sure that particularly education curricula is up to date with the latest advancement in technology and the latest work processes that industry is already adopting in most countries around the world. And we also think that a big component of this is to bring the people with you, especially young people. So we need to be able to show them early on in their education journey what interesting and amazing opportunities they have ahead of themselves particularly in the manufacturing industry, if they go for engineering, for example, that this can open doors to an international career, to an interesting field, and also provide them with opportunities for lifelong learning where they get to learn new skills along the, along the way. So how can we do all of this then? Well, one approach is to build partnerships that span across academia and industry in order to reach a broad target group. One of the leaders in the manufacturing market when it comes to design software is Autodesk. And our business here at KnowledgePoint have partnered with them within their learning partner framework. The learning partner program provides organizations who wish to deliver training and learning experiences to Autodesk users with different supporting tools and resources to do that. There's designations for academic partnerships in order to reach universities, schools, educators, and students. And there's also a niche for industry professionals, which is called the training center designation, where we provide supporting tools to uh, support individuals in industry who want to up or reskill. If you're either looking for training, you can reach out to us and we we'd be happy to recommend one of our existing partners. And if you are in the training industry today and would like to add Autodesk to your portfolio, then we can also support with that. One of the key things when it comes to the whole area of attending training, upskilling, cross-skilling, is to also be able to validate that you have the right skills, those skills that industry needs in order to reap the full benefits of industry 4.0, for example, and digitization. One such method is to go for a certification as an 
additional value add to a training experience or also for those in academia or in, in edu post-secondary education to add industry certification as an additional credential to use as you go out and search for jobs. Autodesk has a certification program centered on their tools used in the manufacturing industry. There are, of course, also other IT certification programs. No matter where one invests, it's crystal clear when looking at different data points that employers and employees alike see a huge benefit in certification. It adds value to the training experience, as mentioned, because the exams are often developed by industry leaders, such as Autodesk, who are in sync with what the industry needs in terms of workflow and technology. So by passing an exam, you're showing that you have those right skills. Employers can make their recruitment and also promotion processes more efficient because you can reward the skills that you need in your business to be successful and drive further economic growth. And while the exam is only a receipt, of course, of the skills acquired, it's a very powerful one. So therefore, we recommend anyone who looks at reskilling, cross-skilling, or even is in the education space today to consider certification as part of the solution. With that said, let us summarize. And I think the key thing we want to say here is that the rapid development in technology is really presenting the manufacturing industry in particular with great opportunities for growth both today, but actually also in the future as digitization really drives the industry forward. We are, however, very clearly seeing in both data and in through interviews that there is an existing skills gap. And the risk is that this grows with time. The faster the development of technology is, the bigger the skills gap will grow unless there are proactive measures put in place to support the workforce to cross and reskill. Employers have a particular responsibility to make sure that you invest in your existing staff, but also in the future workforce by leveraging the new technology and the new processes, but also by investing in training and learning and certification so that the skills are developed in sync with technology. Education, the education sector, also has a responsibility and a role to play in this in terms of making sure that the graduates of today and tomorrow come out into industry with the right skills that the companies need to reap the full benefits of this incredible development that we're seeing. Thank you for listening to this webinar, which was produced by KnowledgePoint. We are a service provided to the learning industry and we're also a partner of Autodesk, which is one of the leading in businesses in the manufacturing space. Through us, you can access different tools and learning resources in order to develop the skills that the manufacturing industry is looking for. And if you're interested in drilling down into the data and the interviews and the conclusions that we've covered high level in this webinar, then feel free to access and download our report, Making in the Digital World Reengineering Skills. You can find it on our website, knowledgepoint.com forward slash future skills. No registration is required. You can download the report immediately. We hope that it would provide you with some useful and good insights that you can leverage in your context. And we would love to hear your feedback. Feel free to reach out to us in either to discuss the findings in the report or to talk about how Autodesk might be part of your future training portfolio. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you soon again.